So what I have laid out here is literally uh, about $5,500 worth of uh, mostly performance parts. Um, I've been stocking this stuff up for roughly about a year. Been buying stuff here and there um, piece by piece. And uh, I finally have everything I need to make this car into the performance monster I've always wanted it to be. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to be as comprehensive about this as possible. And go through every little thing that I got and show you in pretty close detail uh, each part. What the purpose behind the part is, uh, why I bought it, or why, basically my thought process on uh, collecting all this stuff. So, uh, here goes nothing. So I guess we'll start off here on the front and we'll work our way back. So first up on the list, uh, I'll just start with the most non-performance oriented part and go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, this is actually a password JDM part. Uh, I think they call it a front cooling panel, even though I believe it probably doesn't do anything except look cool, which I'm also totally fine with because I like things that look cool. So. Um, yeah, full carbon fiber uh, front cooling panel. There's also a piece that like kind of connects to each end that wraps around the sides of the engine bay that I'll probably end up grabbing at some point. I don't know when, but it's not high on the list right now. So I got this basically on sale while I was on sale. And uh, I just figured I'd get the other pieces that I want later on down the road. So yeah, not only do I want this car to perform good, I want it to the engine bay to look good as well. Shout out to Adam, he uh, he put me on this carbon train. So yeah, I'm coming after you now. I'll probably get these uh, like professionally re uh, re cleared at some point. I think they just come with like a gel coat, but I want them to last for as long as possible. So I'll probably take them to like a auto body guy and just have them re-cleared with like automotive clear instead of the regular old gel coat stuff. Next up on the list um, is the other non-performance oriented part. This is actually a, 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 it's a cover. I don't, I forgot what it covers exactly, but it's made out of titanium. It's from a company called Chasing Jays that I found on Instagram. They uh, make some really, really high quality titanium parts. Not a whole lot for the uh, FRS BRZ platform, but um, yeah, they did make this, so I just figured I'd grab it. So basically, there's kind of like a theme that I'm going for in this engine bay, not including the performance stuff. Um, high quality materials. I want um, carbon fiber and some, maybe if I can swing it, maybe some custom like uh, titanium parts under the engine bay. So, uh, yeah, I want to be able to ride with no hood on and it look just as good as it does with a hood on. I think that'll be pretty sick. So that's basically, you know, going to be the start of the carbon fiber, carbon fiber and uh, titanium stuff. So, yeah, I got those two things. All right, now on to the business stuff. So as far as um, performance oriented parts go, uh, most of the stuff here and most of the money that's been spent has all come from uh, parts made by a company called JDL. If you don't know who JDL is, they're a company that makes like turbo kits and stuff for this platform. I think the Mazda Miata, uh, some Volkswagens, and I think they do some WRX STI stuff. I'm not sure, but mostly like, I believe their bread and butter is mostly on this platform, FRS BRZ. 
So what you, what I have here is basically a full comprehensive kit um, from JDL. Um, this is their front pipe over pipe combo, which I really need because basically everything from my motor back to the front pipe is all totally stock. So I'm about to change that. This car is going to be extremely loud and the front pipe, this is the front pipe and that's the over pipe. That front, the over pipe will be the first part to connect to the down pipe over there. And it'll be a full three inch system. So it should be pretty rowdy once it's all installed. But yeah, that was one of the more expensive pieces, but it comes with a basically lifetime warranty to the uh, original owner. So if it ever cracks or something like that from the heat, then they'll fix it or replace it totally for free. So that's another thing that was kind of attractive about JDL to me is, was that a uh, lifetime warranty on their hot parts. So this turbo also came with a uh, wastegate and blow off valve from Turbo Smart. Pretty, uh, I'm sure that company makes pretty high quality stuff. I'm not really well versed in like turbo stuff and stuff like that, but I've pulled those out and kind of looked at them. They're really, really nice parts. And it also comes with a uh, filter from K&N. Now, the turbo itself, it's a GT2860 RS. So, uh, properly sized for the motor that I have. Um, should spool up quick and I believe it's capable of a little over 300 horsepower um, with the right fuel mods. Um, so yeah, it should be plenty enough for what I wanna make. I just wanna be right around 300 or something like that. So uh, that one will be totally capable of, of doing that. Also with the kit, it comes with an intercooler. You can also get like an upgraded intercooler that's wider and fills out the front bumper a lot more, but it's kind of also overkill for what the power that I'm trying to make. And since I'm only trying to make 300, I think that intercooler is rated for 700, I believe. Um, I won't ever probably won't ever be making anywhere close to that on this motor So the standard intercooler was totally fine for me And then we also have the turbo manifold. It's an unequal length manifold. So I'll also have some good Subi rumble and uh, Yeah, that's basically it Subi rumble unequal length all day There's also a lot more like a uh, fittings and hoses and stuff inside that box that I don't really want to pull out, but just know it's all in there. Everything you need to turbo it's inside of there. Moving over to this side, um, since I'll be boosting the car, I want to run some more high quality oils. Um, the one on the left is the motor oil from Modul, and that's gear oil for the transmission. Since I'm going to have to do a new clutch in this thing anyway, might as well upgrade the uh, transmission fluid. And I also got a uh, gritty oil filter just cause, you know, hot boy stuff. Probably no real reason to get this over anything else. It just, just cause it says gritty, I just went ahead and got it. <laughs> All right, moving on to the clutch kit. Um, this is a clutch from ACT, a uh, pretty well-known company for their clutch clutches and stuff like that. Um, this is a full clutch kit, um, regular weight flywheel, the disc and the pressure plate still in the box. I didn't want to pull that out. And it also comes with a throw out bearing. Now I'm relatively sure that this clutch is needed. A, I mean, excuse me, this car has needed a new throw out bearing for a while now. It kind of makes some, a little bit of noise when you press down on the clutch pedal. So yeah, this was going to happen whether it was getting boosted or not. So um, long time coming, but that's getting upgraded. I also have an OEM um, 2017 plus uh, throw out or release bearing, whatever it's called. So I'll probably run that one instead of the one that came with the ACT clutch. Have the ACT one uh, as a spare in case something ever happens, I need to replace it again. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Um, I'm not really sure what box it's in, but it's, it's in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, that was my thought process on that. That ACT clutch, however, um, as far as not going lightweight flywheel, upon the research that I did, it, it seemed to me like for what I'm going for in, in a street car application, the full weight flywheel sounds like a much better option for me instead of the lightweight version. Um, just for drivability purposes, 
the clutch pedal will still be a little bit heavier, but at least it won't, the revs or whatever won't be as hard to control, you know, through when downshifting and stuff like that. So, um, part number on that is like S sb7 hdss or something like hdss sb7 something like that so uh yeah once i install that i'll probably do like a review on it and let you guys know how it feels and stuff and how i like it so this part right here i'll actually pull this out of the box for you and show you this is a pretty important part Now this is a Veerus Engineering um, billet clutch fork. So once I install the new clutch, um, obviously it'll have a higher clamping load. The stock clutch fork isn't really good at handling a higher clamping force and it tends to bend or break because it's just stamped steel. This, uh, this thing here is definitely a much more substantial upgrade over that. So I'll definitely be replacing that. And I also have uh, a pivot ball somewhere, a, a billet pivot ball somewhere. I don't know where that went, but yeah, just know I have I have that too. So moving over to the right side, a uh, couple of Mishimoto parts. Um, not what you can't see is in the box. I have a Mishimoto oil, air oil separator inside of there and also an oil cooler kit. It's the non-thermostatic version because uh, it stays pretty hot here in Georgia year round. So I didn't really feel like I needed the thermostatic version. And plus this one was like super on sale when I got it. I think they retail for like something over $500 and I got this for like 250 so kinda can't beat that. Now I caught this oil cooler because one because like i just told you it was cheap and two uh since this thing will be boosted it'll be getting hotter it stays pretty hot here in georgia and uh i want my oil to stay you know as cool as possible so yeah that's kind of a in my mind kind of a necessity just because of where i live other places where most of you might live you may not need that also we have the jdl downpipe also the three inch version and also in the box a bunch of uh different intercooler pipes and couplings and clamps and stuff like that and a new oil pan this oil pan it's a it's an oem oil pan but only difference is it has a uh, oil drain welded onto it that way the turbo can drain the oil back down into the oil pan a um, couple more parts that I have didn't pull them out of the boxes, but it's kind of like boring stuff like uh, some um, maintenance type stuff. I have a new Gates serpentine belt um, and some it's some stuff. I, it's a lot of stuff I can't remember. Like little tiny stuff that I can't remember that I ordered that's in there that I know the car needs. And one last thing, it hasn't showed up yet, but I also got a new uh, Tomei part for my exhaust because um, some of you may know this already but I broke my Tomei exhaust from being too low on the highway I hit something I don't know but I found a company Rally Sport Direct they sell a replacement piece for the part that I broke so I ordered that we'll see if I can just fix the Tomei and continue to run it since it's a pretty straight through design and it's three inches so from front to back we'll have a full three inch exhaust maybe overkill but you know room to grow if i ever decide to do so um yeah that part will be here tomorrow but i'll show you that in another video so yeah that's pretty that's a pretty general overview of everything that i've gotten that'll be getting installed on the car here in the next month or two um i plan on getting it done before import alliance but because of the uh whole virus issue import lines got canceled so now i'm kind of not in a rush to do it um and i also have a tuner lined up that uh it's only about an hour and a half away from me so i got a tuner lined up that i'm pretty comfortable with and i'm probably going to go with him um there'll be a vlog on that as well um and yeah this is basically all my parts totaling like a little over fifty five hundred dollars that i've been <laughs> now that i say it whew, it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts to say I spent $5,500 on car parts.
Nani? But yeah, so uh, that's probably gonna do it for this video. Um, got lots of more installs coming for this next phase of the build. Now that I'm done with, mostly done with the aesthetic parts. Um, yeah, this thing's gonna be a beast. A nice, well-rounded, comprehensive build than what I've always wanted. And then maybe somewhere down the road, maybe I'll try to find some other cheap project to work on. But until then, we're knocking this out and we're gonna drive the crap out of it. So if you like these videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I'm gonna keep on pumping them out. Uh, if, you, if any of my homies are watching and wanna help me pull this transmission off, please let me know. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.